for letting us be here, God. Lord, I pray during this time of worship, Lord, that you come in like a flood, God, that we meet you face to face. God, I pray this morning, Lord, that any distractions just um, go away, and Lord, that we just praise you and we glorify you in this time. God, we give you all the praise and honor and glory. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. We will sing, sing, sing And make music with the heavens We will sing, sing, sing Grateful that you hear us when we shout your praise Lift high the name of Jesus What's not to love about you? Heaven and earth adore you Kings and kingdoms bow down Son of God, you are the one, you are the one, we're living for, sing, 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 and make music with the heavens, we will sing, 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 grateful that you hear us when we shout your praise. Like a fire burning, Son of God, you are the one, you are the one. Let's sing it again. You are the love that frees us, you are the light that leads us. Like a fire burning, Son of God, you are the one, you are
with my that the highest king would welcome me. I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. Oh, his free.
we just thank you for your presence God we thank you for the time of worship Lord that we're able to have to just declare the goodness Lord that you have for us God that you're always running after us because God all you want is our heart so God I pray Lord that we just continue to just trust in you in this time God that our relationship just grows stronger with you because, God, we know that you're the answer. We know that you're our hope. We know that our joy comes from you and our peace. So, God, I pray, Lord, that you just continue to just protect us in this time. But, God, most importantly, Lord, that we just learn to continue to grow our relationship with you in this time. Good morning. I want to welcome you and thank you for uh, watching today as, as you're probably at home or maybe some of you are at work and uh, you're watching us either on Facebook or YouTube or our app or our website or whatever platform you're watching, watching me on this morning. Uh, I'm so glad that I could come to you, so glad that I can, I can share the word with you and uh, 
Uh, today's going to be a good day. So uh, let's take an offering before we get started. And um, I just want to say, tell you thank you, first of all, for your giving, uh, for you being faithful during this time. And I know, I know it hasn't been easy on you. I know it hasn't been, uh, been what we expected, but here we are and we're going through this all together. Uh, this is kind of a new normal for us. Uh, so thank you for your giving. Um, of course, I know, I know lots of things have changed, but, but one thing stays the same. Is we still love God. We still love each other. We're still for each other. And we still have the opportunity to give. And we still have the responsibility to give. And so thank you this morning as you give. Let me pray for you this morning. Father, I pray that you'll bless every person who has chosen to give. We realize, God, we don't have to. We get to. We get to give this morning. And so thank you for the opportunity to give. I pray that you'll bless every giver. I pray, God, that you'll bless every gift so that more people might come to know Jesus in a real and significant way. In Jesus' name, I pray. And somebody said, Amen. Bless you this morning as you give. You can give on our website. You can give on our app. And uh, God will richly bless you for it, I'm sure. All right, if you have your Bible this morning, uh, turn with me to John chapter 14, verse 1. We're going to begin reading there. John chapter 14, verse 1. Jesus speaking to his disciples, he said this, as he's beginning to explain some things that are going to be happening uh, soon to him and to them, he begins out his discourse in John chapter 14, verse 1. He says this, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. I'm going to stop right there for a second. He said, Let not your heart be troubled. Where I want to go with that this morning is, is this. He knew that there would be a a propensity to allow our hearts to be troubled, to be carried away with life and with issues and with stuff and with things. And in fact, he says, he says in another place, he says to guard your heart with all diligence for out of it springs the issues of life. So he said to guard our heart, but here he says, let it not be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. That word trouble means to be agitated. It means to cause inward commotion. It means to take away calmness of mind. It, it means to be restless. It means to be stirred up. It means to be troubled. It means to render anxious or to become distressed. To perplex the mind of one struggling with something in their heart. So he's saying, listen, don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let it be in turmoil. Don't let it be restless. And I don't know about you, but in these times, it's real easy for our hearts to get troubled. But Jesus is saying it here to his disciples, and he's saying it secondarily to us. Do not let your heart be troubled. Do not let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Verse 2. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. And Thomas, probably much like us many times, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going, and how can we know the way? And then Jesus said these life-changing words to Thomas, to his, the other disciples that were gathered there, and to us some 2,000 years later, he said this. And Jesus said to him, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He says, listen, I'm going to go. I'm going to go away soon. But if I go away, I'm going to prepare a place for you. I'm going to prepare 
I'm going to prepare, prepare a mansion for you, a dwelling place for you, that where I am, there you may be also. In other words, in the coming days, in the coming years, I'm going to go and prepare a place for you, and I'm going to receive you to myself. And then when, when you come up there with me, we'll never be separated ever again. But he's alluding to that there's going to be a separation between Jesus and his disciples. Verse 7. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. And from now on, you'll know him and have seen him. And Philip said to him in verse 8, Lord, show us the father and it's sufficient for us. Jesus said to him, I have been with you so long, and yet you've not known me, Philip. He who has seen me has seen the Father, so how can you say, show us the Father? Because he's spreading this message that the Father and the Son, and later coming the Holy Spirit, is one. So if you do not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, the words I speak to you, I do not speak to you on my own authority. But the Father who dwells in me does the work. You see, Jesus was just speaking the heart of the Father. Believe me that I'm in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. He's saying, listen, there's no difference between what the Father is saying and what I am saying. We're all one together. It's just two distinct personalities here. One's in physical form and one's in a heavenly form. And if he've said it, I say it. And so if you've met me, you've met the Father. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that, that I do... He will also do, and greater works will these than these will He do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Verse 14, and if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Verse 15, oh, could we just skip verse 15? No, we can't. Oh, here it is. You ready? Verse 15, John chapter 14. He says this, If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, do what I say. And I will pray the Father, and He will give you another helper, that He may abide with you forever. See, now he's alluding to the coming of the Holy Spirit. He's saying, listen, and I'm going to pray to my Father, and he will give you another helper, a parakletos, the Greek says, the one who will come alongside of, that will lead you, that will guide you, that will direct you. He'll give you another helper, and he will abide with you forever. Verse 17, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. He's alluding to Acts chapter 2 in the in, not in the indwelling, but in the filling of the Holy Ghost, the filling of the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2. He dwells with you. You see, let me teach you something this morning. There's two different kinds of fillings in, in Scripture. There's there's when you accept Jesus as your Savior, you are indwelt with the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit that will lead you, guide you, direct you, and convict you of your sin. And then there's another experience or a baptism of the Holy Spirit where you have a new language and you speak, you speak a heavenly prayer language, a tongue. That's a separate experience. But when we accept Jesus as our Savior... The Holy Spirit comes in and now abides in us, now lives in us and convicts us of our sin and will help us and will teach us and minister to us. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. So that's one baptism. That's one filling. That's one indwelling of the Holy Spirit, if you will. And then the second experience, the baptism in the Holy Spirit, is where you actually have a prayer language where you have... The, the, the indwelling, the infilling of the Holy Spirit 
with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Two separate experiences there. He says, listen, he's going to be with you, and then he's going to be in you. Verse 18, I love this. He says this, I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Verse 19. A little while longer, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me because I live. You will also live. I'm allu- he's, he here is alluding to the fact that he's going to be crucified, died, resurrected. Then he's going to go to the right hand of God the Father. And we'll not see him again physically until he returns in the air to meet his bride in the air. But he's saying, listen, but because I live, you live also. Because he's about ready to abolish death once and for all. Verse 20, and that day you'll know that I'm in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. There's going to be a perfect harmony together, and we're going to be together, and nothing can separate us. Nothing shall separate us from the love of our Father. But he's saying, listen, I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. We're all together. Verse 21. He who has my commandments and keep them, it is he who loves me. Here he says it again, doesn't he? And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Verse 22. Judas, not Issachariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world. And Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he'll keep my word. And my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the words which you hear is not mine, but the Father who sent me. How good is that? If anyone loves me, He'll keep my word, and my Father will love him. I don't know about you, but I want the love of the Father this morning. And we will come to him, and we'll make our home with him. I don't know about you, but I want the Father and the Son to make their home with me. How about you? Verse 25, he says this, These things I've spoken to you while being present with you. But the Helper the Paracletos, the Holy Spirit, the one that's going to come alongside of you, whom the Father will send in my name, He'll teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all the things I said to you. So see the perfect unity? God the Father sent God the Son, and now God the Son is sending a, and and the Father is sending a helper, and He will bring into remembrance all the things that Jesus said to us. In other words, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit will always speak in perfect unity together. And the Holy Spirit or Jesus would never say anything that's contrary to God the Father. Huh, that's good. So the Holy Spirit will never speak. Let me, te- let me teach you something. The Holy Spirit will never speak something to your heart that's contrary to the Word of God and to what God the Father and Jesus Christ has said. If it is, it's not the Holy Spirit. Verse 27. He says, peace I leave with you. Peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Here he says it again. He says it in verse 1. Now he says it again 27 verses later. In verse 27 he says, let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. You have heard me say to you, I'm going away and coming back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice because I said, I'm going to the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I've told you before it comes, and when it comes to pass, you may believe. Jesus here is speaking prophetically 
I'm going to go away, but I'm going to come back again. I'm going away, but I'm going to the Father. So when you see this, you'll believe because I did what I said I would do. Come on, somebody. I'll keep my promises. Verse 30, I'll no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me. But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, so I do. And then he says, arise and let us go on from here. I'm sure those disciples that day as he's, as he's giving this wonderful dissertation about not letting their hearts be troubled, that God the Father and God the Son and the coming God, the Holy Spirit, the Helper, the one who's going to come alongside of them in just a, a, a few short weeks, a few short months to come, he's saying, listen, we all speak together as one, and if you love me, then you have loved the Father. And everything that the Holy Spirit says, I would say, and God His say. How wonderful is that, that we don't have... See, so many people get so confused with the Trinity, with the triune Godhead of our Bible, of our, of our faith. But it's simple. It's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and they all speak the same thing as one. We have one God. We don't have three gods. We have one God in three distinct personalities or in three distinct characteristics to manifest God the Father's purpose on the earth. God the Father that manifested Himself in God the, Fa God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. We serve one God in three distinct personalities. And no, that does not mean that our God has multiple personalities. He only speaks one thing. And it is the truth. He says in verse 1, let not your heart be troubled. He says in verse 27, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. There's going to be some changes come, and I'm trying to warn you of some changes that are getting ready to come. Listen, there are some changes that are getting ready to come in our lives and have come to our lives, and we don't have to be afraid. Why? Because verse 27, the beginning part of that statement, Jesus said it himself to his disciples, and secondarily, he says it to us. He says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. He's saying, listen, I'm going to give you peace. I'm going to give you the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. I'm going to give you the peace of God. And it will rule and reign in your hearts. And you don't have to be troubled. And you don't have to be afraid. And I don't know about you, but in this time, we need to grab a hold of that and say, Lord, I refuse in the name of Jesus to be troubled. And I refuse to be afraid and carried away by distress and carried away by fear and carried away by frustration and the fear of the unknown. I told you a couple of weeks ago when we first started our videos that, listen, Many times I have been fearful in my life about things that never even came to pass. So why am I wasting all my time on my fear? Because most of those things never even happened. And so instead I'm going to walk in faith. I'm going to walk not by sight, but, but by faith in Jesus' name. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to walk it out. I'm going to put one foot in front of the other. I'm going to call it out as it is. And I have peace because Jesus said that He's given me peace. And I'm not allowing my heart to be troubled because He said not to let it get troubled. So in Jesus' name, I will not allow my heart to get troubled. And in Jesus' name, I'm going to guard my heart with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of life. And so I'm going to do my job and God will do His job and I'll have my heart guarded in Jesus' name, and I'll not let it be troubled, and I'll not let it be afraid, because everything is going to be all right. Before the coronavirus, during the coronavirus, and after the coronavirus, everything is going to be all right, because God is on my side. And He said in Romans chapter 8, uh, 
that all things work together for good for them who love God and are called according to His purpose. And so somehow, some way, God is going to make it all turn around for good. God is a God of the turnaround and He's going to turn this thing around and He's going to make it for our good. So I'm going to trust and be glad in Him. I'm going to trust and be faithful in Him. I'm going to tithe. I'm going to give. I'm going to pray. I'm going to worship. I'm going to love people. I'm going to get out and do my thing. I'm going to work hard and I'm going to see God's results because I'm going to do what God's asked me to do. Come on, somebody. I refuse to be led by fear. Instead, in Jesus' name, I'll be led by faith and I'll be led by the Spirit of God. Come on. And if we can get that, we'll kick this thing. Come on. We won't be troubled and we won't be fearful and we won't be afraid because if God is on our side, greater is he that lives in me than he who lives in the world. Come on, we need to preach that. And as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Come hell or come high water, we're going to stand and see the salvation of our God. Like Jehoshaphat many times in the last few weeks, in Second Chronicles chapter 20, I said, Lord, I don't know what to do. But my eyes are on you. And he kept telling me, Roy, the battle is not yours. It's mine. I'll fight this thing for you, son. Oh, my goodness. He's for me. He's not against me. He thinks good thoughts towards me and towards you today. Ah, everything is going to be all right. And so we trust in our God this morning. We trust in our God and we refuse to allow our hearts to be troubled in this time. Listen, come what may, God is on our side and everything is going to be all right. Let me give you one last scripture. I give this scripture every single week. Let me give this to you. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 13 says this, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there's no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is over all and is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Someone recently asked me, they said, well, what do I need to be saved from? I've been a good person. I've never cheated on anybody. I've never hurt nobody. I've never killed nobody. I, I've lived a good life. And, and if your God is a God of love, then what do I have to be saved from? I don't have anything to be saved from. I've lived a really, really great life. And I said, listen, we were all born into sin needing a Savior. Because of the fall of Adam and Eve, We've all now been born into sin and we need the remedy of our sin. And no matter how good you think you have been, you're still not good enough for God until you accept His Son as your Savior, the one who will come and the one who will save you. And so if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, He says this, you will be saved. Maybe you're here watching me today and you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart. Maybe you've been like that one gentleman that just recently asked me, what do I got to be saved from? But maybe there's something down deep in your heart that's saying right now, that's tapping you on your heart saying, no, today is your day and you need to accept Jesus as your Savior. I'd like to pray with you. Just right where you are, I'd like to pray with you right now. Just repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I ask you right now to come into my heart and to save me. I believe that God raised you from the dead. I believe that I'm now saved. Walk with me all the days of my life. Help me to follow you in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer, I believe that you've got born again. I believe that you've gotten saved. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord 
shall be saved. And this is what I want you to do. My information is going to be on the screen. My personal cell phone number, my personal, my, my email address there, the church email address will be there. Our website will be there. And I want, I want you to contact me and I want to send you a Bible and I want to send you some literature that I've prepared for you to, to cultivate this relationship with Jesus. Every relationship has to be grown and nurtured. And so I want you to, to write me, text me, call me, Facebook me, reach me however you want to reach me. But let me know that today you've accepted Jesus as your Savior, that you prayed that prayer at the end of this video with me. And I'll send you a Bible and I'll send you some literature to help begin to cultivate your relationship. I'll send it to you free of charge. I'll never solicit your information. I'll never ask you for money. I don't need your money. I don't want your money. I want to get some resources into your hand to help be a blessing to you so that you can further begin to follow this relationship that you just now started with Jesus. And I'll help you do that. And then I'm going to ask you to do one more thing. When churches open back up again, I'm going to ask you to come visit us. I got a seat saved for you. And I want you to come visit me. I want you to come and shake my hand. I want to introduce myself to you. And uh, uh, I want to teach you. Give me, give, me, give me a little bit of time in your life. And I believe that God's Word and the power of God's Word will change your life and you'll never be the same. And so listen, so reach out to me today and uh, it'll be good. Listen to all my church family and friends are all over the country watching this. Would you do me a favor and would you like this and share this so that more people might get to hear our message and we'll do the same thing for you. I pray that you have a great week. God bless you and we'll talk to you soon.